Hi, afternators. Well, that's what we're going to call you today because today I'm here to talk about this, this book right here. This book is getting turned into a movie. It comes out on April 12th. It's a Friday that is going to be this Friday and I actually own all of the books. Um, I'm actually missing one because I let a friend borrow it and I hope she's enjoying it. This one technically is called Before but it comes after the After series. I know that's funny. Anyways, so I made a list because I can kind of get sidetracked so we're gonna get right into this. Okay, what's it about? Let me read it to you. Tessa is a good girl with a sweet, reliable boyfriend back home. She got direction, ambition, and a mother who's intent on keeping her that way. But she's barely moved into her freshman dorm when she runs into Harden. With his tousled brown hair, cocky British accent, tattoos, and lip piercing, Harden is a cute different from what she's used to. But he's also rude, to the point of cruelty even. For all his attitude, Tessa should hate Harden, and she does until she finds herself alone with him in his room. Something about his dark mood grabs her and when they kiss, it ignites within her a passion she never knew before. He calls her beautiful, then insists he isn't the one for her and disappears without a word. Despite the reckless way he treats her, Tessa is compelled to dig deeper and find the real Harden beneath all his lies. He pushes her away again and again, yet every time she pushes back, only he only pulls her in even deeper. Tessa already has the perfect boyfriend, so why is she trying so hard to overcome her own hurt, pride, and Harden's prejudice about a nice girl like her? Unless, could it be love? Alright, that last line sounds a little cheesy, that's true. But um, it's actually a really good read. It, it does well of captivating you. And uh, the second to last line sounds a little bit like Pride and Prejudice, don't you think? And that has to do with the fact that the book is about two book lovers. Um, Hardin Scott's favorite novel is Wuthering Heights. And then uh, Tessa, uh, she loves Pride and Prejudice. They often find themselves comparing their future relationship to it. So like that's just kind of like a little taste to what it is. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the book first, then I'm going to talk about the movie and a couple similarities and differences. So for the book, um, it was originally a fan fiction. Yes, that is true. Some of you may have heard about that. Some of you may have read the original version. It was a One Direction, primarily Harry Styles fan fiction. But really the only th thing about it was that they used the names and like the physiques of the boys. So, but like personality wise, it doesn't have them as who they are. Um, none of them even sing actually in the book so like it's just basically the names and their physique. And then um, the book brings awareness to abuse. Uh, some people kind of get it a bit confused that it's like romanticizing it. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later but um, Anna herself has said that this isn't a book to go for looking for relationship advice because that's not you're not going to find that in it. Uh, it t like Yes, Harding can be a bit abusive emotionally, um, physically towards himself, as, as in like he's a bit masochistic, he will get in fights on purpose and this and that. Uh, so like not necessarily abuse towards, well it's more of abuse towards each other and themselves. It sounds harsh and it sounds bad but like in all reality People do that. Like people like abuse themselves, whether it's emotionally, physically, mentally. Some people are abusive in relationships. But while he never hits her, um, he he does manipulate her in the beginning, and like that's just how he is. That's how, that was like his defense of himself. Um, and you know, like the book's uh, description says, she was like a kind of like a naive little girl. Kind of describes her as that way. Um, and so the book is about like after Harden. So the, the first book is in her point of view. The other, the second book, about halfway-ish, it turn it switches and it goes from Harden's point of view. Then from there on, 
it will go back and forth. But the first book, primarily, is um, the one that's getting into, turning into a movie. That's the one that is in Tessa's point of view. I'm pretty sure the movie is probably going to be a third person point of view. And so the book is supposed to be like, oh, um, after him I'll never be the same. And the movie is more like, after my first I'll never be the same. So the book isn't like, after him I'll never be the same. And in this book, it's all in Tessa's point of view. The second one kind of switches up halfway and it starts to go back and forth between Harden and Tessa's point of view. And so eventually he'll end up catching himself saying after her he'll never be the same. So it's kind of like after each other. And then for the, but for the movie it's more after your first you'll never be the same. But I can't, I don't know how that's going to go with the other movies since Harden's clearly not a virgin, hasn't been since he was like 12, 13, maybe 14. I think it was like 13 or 14 actually. Um, for the most part, it's actually what teens go through. Like those relationships that shouldn't happen or those friendships that aren't exactly good for you and then you realize who you who are your real friends and who aren't. I like it. I, I like this book because it is, for the most part, um, realistic. Uh, I am just now in college-ish and when I first read it, I was in high school, so like, you don't necessarily have to be in college to go through what they go through. It's just like, the environment's a little bit different. The story can be the same, maybe not as exaggerated or as intense. Um, Alright, yeah. I often found myself like, cringing or rolling my eyes at Tessa, because like, yeah, she's an innocent girl, been with the same guy forever, hasn't even like, done anything with him. And, and so like sometimes I'm just like, ugh, facepalm, like, shut up Tessa, or you're so stupid, it's right in front of you, like you might be book smart, but come on, how can you not see that, or whatever, sometimes I'm like that towards the other characters, but I mainly catch myself finding Tessa um, a bit annoying for that reason, like we all have that one friend that you just kind of want to slap, be like, oh my gosh, can't you see what's right there, and so I guess Tessa would be more of that person, like, almost naive, um, I guess. I mean, I'm not gonna call her naive. I don't think it romanticizes abuse. Uh, I honestly just believe that if you think that, it's kind of like <clears throat> you need to uh, open your mind a bit more and look at the bigger picture, not just what's happening right then and there. Uh, there's lots of character growth, and I really do love that. There's lots of char character growth with the minor characters as well, as well, not just the main characters. Both the main characters have a passion for books. I mentioned that Hardin likes Wuthering Heights. They both have read Pride and Prejudice. They both read the same books. And there's a specific scene that uh, uh, Tessa, she's all like depressive and she she's just like Miss Debbie Downer and she starts quoting Hemingway, um, you know, from the, lo the Lost Generation, like those writers and this and that. You can, they're known for that sadness. And so he, he just like kind of stops and is like, don't quote Hemingway at me. And I, I just kind of found that like the best line ever. I really hope that's in the movie. Uh, speaking of the movie, time for the movie. All right, um, I'm gonna go right off the bat. This movie is no longer a fan fiction. Like it, if you read it while it was on Wattpad, Wattpad is a place to read uh, things that like random people write. Like, they're not authors, they're not official authors, it's not, they just write what they want. That, and so, that, I guess you would say, was a fan fiction. But once it was published, and now that it's becoming a movie, it is no longer a fan fiction. It is just way more than a fan fiction. Things are changed, things are different, it it's, doesn't even use their names, their physiques are completely different, so the movie itself has no correlations towards One Direction or anything like that. It is its own thing now, and I wish people would understand that. Okay, all right, before I get too into that, um, Anna was a producer in this movie. So she gave full warning that there was gonna be kind of changes and she would let people know that, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And I appreciate her being on there. I feel like that's what's gonna make it as close to what uh, people envisioned as possible because you know when you read, you ha you're basically playing a movie in your head. And so you want that to be portrayed as well as what you pictured yourself. So I do hope that um, I get 
to to really good similarities between what I imagined and what she imagined and how it's gonna turn out. I'm gonna say that if you've seen the trailers or if you've heard anything about it, you probably heard that it's compared to Fifty Shades of Grey. I have read Fifty Shades of Grey, um, and I've seen the movies, and they're not the same. The only similar similarities you're gonna get is um, the virgin college girl and with the experienced boy with a, like a haunting past. That's all you're gonna get as similarities besides being based in Washington, the state. <clears throat> and well, I guess Fifty Shades was a, was a fan fiction of Twilight, so I guess fanfic fan fic based, they have that. All right, I'll, I'll give them that. Okay, okay, so I have a theory that they're gonna um, tone, well, it's not necessarily a theory. She actually said that they're gonna tone it down a bit. Like she, when she was writing it, she did portray things kind of harsh or she wished she wrote it in a different way. And so I know that they're gonna change, make some of those changes into the movie. And then um, Noah, which is Tessa's boyfriend going into college, uh, they're bringing in, like, they're going to have the relationship last longer than what it did in the book. In the book, I think, like, a month into her being there, they broke up. And I'm going to assume he's there for at least half the semester in the movie. That's my, that's what I think. And then I also believe Molly, Molly is that, like, the school slut, uh, she's fake, she hangs out with nothing but dudes, this and that. But I actually kind of like Molly. Uh, I guess it's because she reminds me of, of a specific person who's actually like all those things but more. So I have a feeling that, you know, Molly's actually going to be like a really cool character. In the book, she's kind of like a second plot-ish. More, more like an underlying plot, kind of. I don't know. She, she, she kind of seems like she's after, she's out to get Tessa, but she's really not. She just likes, I guess she just likes fucking with her. But uh, I think they're going to tone her down a bit because too many plots going on at once during a movie can be kind of distracting. Uh, that's just a theory. Right. What does this mean to me, this book? Alright, okay. So, I love One Direction. I love fan fictions. I now love reading. And this is like my one of my favorite series. So, basically all of my favorite things coming together and becoming a movie. Like... I can't explain how that makes me feel, but I think from the non-stop smiling that I'm doing, you can kind of have an idea of what it is. Uh, I'm already going to an early screening of the movie. I'm getting a limited edition t-shirt of the movie. Uh, when I get it in, I will try to post a photo on one of my social medias. I'm really excited for it, actually. I really am. Uh, so when I first read it was in my sophomore year, I was about 15 years old, and so like everybody has, so you know like that thing where it's just like, oh the the funny friend, the goofy friend is actually really the depressed friend. Go check in on them. Isn't that that's me? I would skip lunch a lot, and I'll just go to the library. Sometimes there was a group of people who just either already ate or didn't go to lunch either, and I would hang out with them. Sometimes I would just sit on one of the couches and read the book. I don't know if you can tell, but the book is kind of like really broken into like I have tape on this book just so the binds wouldn't rip since it is paperback <laughs> so I mean it this book means a lot to me and like I could read through that series in a month and I can't tell you how many times I've read through it I wasn't in the greatest mindset when I was reading it either uh, I was more of a secluded isolated myself and so like you know Almost living in a fantasy world, like, as a way to escape, kind of. And so I, I do really like this book. And um, I see a lot of myself in Hardin. Not, I don't treat people the way he does, but, like, the way he thinks of himself, the constant turmoil he's in. Like, uh, I even told Anna that, and she kind of gave me a concerned look. And I was like, oh, no, I just outed myself towards the author of this book. Oh, no. Okay. Now on to the topic that... If you clicked on this video, that's probably why you clicked on it. Why is it controversial? Okay. Overall, it's just, it's not romanticizing abuse. And I, I do feel like people who say that and try to drill it into everybody, because people who believe that, that's what they do. They drill it into everybody that don't support it. It's abusive. But it's not simple as that. Look at the bigger picture. It's a toxic relationship in the beginning 
turned into finding who they are as a person and fixing their own turmoils to maybe we can do this actually when we fix ourselves or I'm not I don't want to give any spoilers or anything but like eventually you know it's that whole uh once they realize they got to work on themselves then maybe they can work on each other on on their relationship and it takes four books there's actually five um so yeah it takes a minute but like that stuff doesn't happen in two months it doesn't happen in a year all right okay next subject it's not a fan fiction anymore um it's not describing harry as this abusive person as this person that that doesn't respect women or this and that harry styles is a purchased little doll we should protect him he loves and respects everybody treat people with kindness uh, this isn't about him anymore. It hasn't been since it's been turned into a book. And honestly, I feel like people need to get over it. It was at one point a fan fiction. It hasn't been since 2014 when this became a book. When they changed the names and they changed the style of how they portrayed it. How they like portrayed it. Because it's not even Harry anymore. It is not. Um, you can read it and think of a, a whole new person. Uh, you can read it and think of a specific person. It's not about the boys anymore, specifically Harry. It's not like I do wish people would get over that. And even Harry himself has said that, you know, I uh, he's never said that he hated. He has made a comment, and the only comment he's ever said about it is, "I hope he gets some more than me." And like, if that's all he has to say about it, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe he hasn't read it. Probably not. I would assume he has better things to do. But if he's saying that he hopes that Harden gets laid more than he does, I think he's just, you know, very leveled about it. Like, he, he made a joke. Like, why do people have to take everything so seriously? I'm really excited for this movie. I hope all of y'all give it a try. Just go watch it once. On a Tuesday, it's $5 if you're an AMC member, okay? So, like, if you don't want to be like, I'm not wasting my money watching this stupid movie, go on a Tuesday, $5, whatever. Just, I'm trying to get the other movies, okay? I, I, I deserve this, okay? It is 2019. These books... These books came out in 2014. Okay, this one came out in 2014. In case you're wondering, it's signed. That's what the little tabs are for. I just never took out the sticky notes. Um, Anna came here um, a couple months ago, and she did a signing, and I, I went to that. I had fun. Anyways, go support the movie. If you like the movie, read the book. If you're not a movie person, read the book. Leave a comment and tell me what you think about the book. If you've read it, tell me what you think about the movie when you see it. I want everybody to go support this, okay? If and then let me know if you think I'm wrong on some of the things. Please support me on this by liking and sharing this video. And I'll see y'all again soon on a part two about this. Peace and love, guys. Peace and love.